Welcome back. After the state legislature said no to allowing Tesla Motors to sell its cars without a network of dealerships, Tesla followed up this week by suing Michigan, teeing up a marquee battle between the historic home of the automobile and upstart Silicon Valley, which would like to become a different kind of auto capital. I turn, as I often do, to Auto Matters to John McElroy, the host of Auto Line Detroit. John, good to have you here this morning. Thanks, Kevin. This is a fascinating battle, isn't it? It's a great battle. I mean, here you've got a car company suing the state of Michigan in federal court. Mm -hmm. So this is a big gamble on both sides, both on Tesla's and Michigan's. Whoever wins this wins big. And this, uh, some people have said that this is really uh, bigger than Tesla. And of course, it must be the ramifications if you allow somebody to start selling cars in Michigan without a network of dealerships. Tesla's just the first. There would be others, presumably. There could be. Now, having said that, the traditional automakers, the GM, Fords, Chryslers, and whatever, they cannot leave the franchise agreement. Once you're in, you're in. I mean, this, that's pretty so much. So this doesn't have ramifications does, for the big does three, not really. for them. But what I think the big three are worried about is the Chinese are going to be here. They're right around the corner. So what if the franchise agreement is not as efficient as selling direct? Maybe. I don't believe that for a matter of fact. But that's what the big three and all the other automakers are worried about. Maybe the Chinese come in and they have some new way of selling cars that's cheaper and better. Tesla says that they're, they're part of their different way of doing this is because it's not a typical automobile. They're selling this electric device, which is a different kind of thing. Uh, it's an it's automobile. A, it's, a it's an automobile. But they do, but their approach is very different. They set up their dealerships in places like shopping malls. They don't really have, uh, they have a very different way of looking at it, but I think to some people's way of thinking, and especially reading the national take on Michigan, they're trying to paint us as a dinosaur that's clinging to this old model, and this is the new way. This is the Amazon way of shopping. We want to just buy, we don't need a middleman. Sure, what Tesla's saying is why should there be a law that says you can only sell cars through franchise dealers? I didn't make up the analogy, but I love it. It's like saying you cannot sell hamburgers unless you sell through a franchise. So go to Burger King or McDonald's or whatever. It's the same sort of thing. What Tesla's really doing is ca copying Apple. They love the Apple stores. Mm -hmm. They want their car stores, they don't even call them dealerships, to be very much like that. Now we're going to see in federal court. Personally, I think the state of Michigan is going to lose. I think Tesla is going to win this one. And if they based win in federal, based on, I think this is restraint of trade. I don't see how you can write a law that effectually uh, uh, affects only one company. I don't see how you can say possibly you can only buy cars through franchisees. Through a, a I, I just don't see that holding up in a court of law. Um, in the bigger picture, we also have this huge fight going on for where the center of this mobility world, you don't even call it an auto world anymore, mm -hmm. where it's going to be. This plays into that too, doesn't it? It? it really does. I mean, this is Silicon Valley versus Detroit. Although we say Detroit, it's more than that. It's Stuttgart. It's, sure. it's Tokyo. Yeah. It's Seoul, Korea. It's Shanghai. Mm -hmm. It's the traditional auto industry fighting the new startups in Silicon Valley and some other high-tech places. Israel, for example. There's some other, yeah. you know, Silicon Valley-like areas in other places of the world. Now, the other interesting component of this is that Detroit is ready to roll out its sort of answer to Tesla, and that's the Chevy Bolt, which is going to beat the Tesla Model 3 to market by at least a year, at it least looks a year. like, and you've driven it, and? Uh, look, this is a great little car. I mean, it's electric. It'll go 240 miles on a charge, more or less. Way uh, over that 200-mile sort of target that that had the where the range anxiety has always been. Yeah, and GM's been sandbagging all along, and so is <laughs> Tesla. They're saying, oh, yeah, it'll be about 200. I knew it was going to be more than 200, so it's more like 238 to be precise, and that's a combined city and highway. But going back to the Bolt, very well designed, very well thought through, it's a player in the market. And when you look at how Tesla got 400,000 deposits for its Model 3, yeah. Boy, the market could be big for the Bolt as well. It seems enormous. There's also there's a sexiness, of course, to Tesla that I don't think a Chevy can necessarily match, and that it's it's exotic. There's no doubt about it. But just as we were starting to wonder about the longevity of or, or the real li shelf life of electric vehicles, because at two dollar and fifty cent gas, it's hard to get people to talk about it. This is showing us a different market that we maybe didn't understand. Yeah, what's really changing here, uh, Devin, is that the price of the batteries is coming down faster than expected. Yeah, and it's not just the batteries, it's the electronics and the electric motors and et cetera, et cetera. But electric cars are fun to drive. They're so quiet. They have instant torque. I mean, as an enthusiast, yes. I love these cars. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, you've seen the videos, I'm sure, on YouTube 
of a, a Tesla beating a, a Challenger Hellcat in yeah. a drag race. Yeah. That's how fast they are. It's extraordinary. And the other thing that's wild about these vehicles, for instance, a Tesla, you don't take it in to get it update to get you know something fixed. You download it. Yeah, so they have <laughs> what they call. World. Well, yeah, it, it is a brand new world, and so yeah, in the future you may not have to take your deal, your, your car back to the dealer. Yeah. They're just going to zap new software into it over the air. So you go to bed at night, and you wake up in the morning, and voila, your car is even better. Last thing though, Tesla has is finding out how may now find out how difficult it is to produce this many vehicles. They certainly got, and and Elon Musk hasn't always hit his deadlines. Where do you suppose all this is going? Oh, he'll miss his deadlines again. I'm pretty confident <laughs> okay. of that. And yeah, you know, so far Tesla's been very lucky. They have what they call early adopters. Right. People love the company. So if the door handle doesn't work, I don't care. I still love Tesla. If the sunroof leaks, I don't care. I love the Tesla. Wait till he goes to the mass market. People are not going to stand for that. Different world. They've got to get their quality straightened out. John, I always love talking to you about these things. Thanks very much for being here. You bet. Anytime, Devin. When we come back, we'll get you set for tomorrow night's debate. Stick around. This is Flashpoint on Local.